In this movie, I'm going to demonstrate using the combination of Adobe After Effects CS 5.5 and Adobe Audition CS 5.5 to improve a voiceover track that went along with an on-screen interview. For my subject, I'm using myself and a voiceover I did for one of our After Effects Apprentice training series. You'll notice that this one layer has both audio and video components, and I can confirm that by selecting it in the project panel and seeing both the video specs and the audio specs. However, Audition is a dedicated audio editor, so to edit this type of file, you need to go through a slightly different workflow. You still select the file that you want and go Edit, Edit in Adobe Audition. But now when you auto switch to Audition, you'll see there's two files, your audio portion of that combined track and your video portion of your combined track. The audio portion is automatically loaded into the same editor you saw in the previous example. However, if you want to see the video in context with your audio while you're working, or if you want to add additional audio tracks inside Audition, like sound effects, music, etc., you would do File, New, Multitrack Session. This allows you to see multiple pieces of media in sync with each other. I would make sure that the sample rate, 44100, matched the sample rate of my audio track that I brought in, give it a name that I would want, such as VoiceOver Enhance, and save it to desired location. Click OK. If I wanted to see the two in context, I just drag the audio to one track, drag the video to another track, it automatically puts it in our video reference, it opens it in a video viewer down here, press the spacebar and I'll see them both in sync. Hi, I'm Chris Meyer of Chris Design and welcome to After Effects Apprentice Advanced Animation. However, if I just want to edit this audio track in isolation, I can just double click it and view it in its normal isolated viewer. Okay, let's improve this voiceover. It has some problems that are common to lots of voiceover tracks that you're going to get from your clients. I'll press plus on the keyboard to zoom in a little bit. Most people are not professional voiceover talents, myself included. And us non-professionals make a couple common mistakes. One is we forget to breathe. So you'll hear me intake breath in between these phrases. In this lesson, I wanna share with you a number of tips and tricks you can use to help craft and refine your animations inside After Effects. So one thing I'd like to do is suppress those breath noises in between my phrases. The second problem with people who are not professional voiceover artists is keeping an even volume throughout. They may start out loud at the beginning of a sentence, but then lose steam. You can see the height of this waveform go down as I run out of breath during the course of that sentence. Or they'll emphasize some words over other words. In general, the volume level is not even. So in this case, I want to do two things. Suppress these breaths, but also make my overall voiceover louder and more consistent in quality. So let's do that. Rather than listen to this entire minute and a half track over and over again, I'm going to select a particular area that exhibits these problems. This has my breath noises and inconsistent levels. I'll preview that briefly. In this lesson, I want to share with you a number of tips and tricks you can use to help craft and refine your animations inside After Effects. If I want that to repeat continuously, I turn on the loop playback, and I'm actually going to tighten down my selection a little bit, not to include these little fragments of words at the beginning and end. Okay, now that I have my selection, let's go into the effects. Whenever you need to change the dynamics of a track, how quiet it is, how loud it is at any given moment, and you want to do that without having to draw a volume curve for the entire track, you want to use effects in the amplitude and compression section. And you'll see you have many choices, including a de which helps remove sibilances from your voiceovers, compressors, speech volume levelers, etc. I personally like using the Dynamics Processing Tool. This is a nice, flexible, general purpose tool to improve the dynamics, the loudness and the quietness of a voiceover. This is the effect at its default settings. I'm not gonna use any of the presets here. And the main user interface is actually pretty simple. Along the bottom is loudness on the input from quiet sounds to louder sounds. And along the right side is loudness on the output from quiet sounds to loud sounds. This blue line is the translation from input loudness to output loudness. Quieter sounds happen down here at the lower left. Louder sounds happen up here at the upper right. The breath noises are quieter sounds, so let's start down here in the lower left. When I'm making a breath noise on the input, I'd like to lower that volume on output. 
So let's preview this and play around with that particular part of the curve. Plus, I want to share with you a number of tips and tricks you can use to help craft and refine your animations inside After Effects. In this lesson, I want to share with you a Did you hear how much quieter those breath noises were? I'm going to turn off preview here for a moment. Play it again. A number of tips and tricks you can use to help craft and refine your animations inside After Effects. In this lesson, I want to share with you a number of tips and tricks you can use to help craft and refine your animations inside After Effects. That's a nice improvement. Okay, I've knocked down my breaths. Now, let's increase the overall volume of my voice. I don't want to increase it to the point where it starts clipping. I don't want to push into the over range. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this little bar at the top that says, take the loudest parts and curve them off to maximum volume. But in between the areas that are quieter, go ahead and raise those volumes. And again, let's preview. In this lesson, I want to share with you a number of tips and tricks you can use to help craft and refine your animations inside After Effects. In this lesson, I want to share with you a number of tips and tricks you can use to help craft and refine your animations inside After Effects. In this lesson, I want to share with you a number of tips and tricks you can use. Now, obviously, you can push it too far like I was, but this was before to help craft and refine your animations inside After Effects and after. In this lesson, I want to share with you a number of tips and tricks you can use to help craft and refine your animations inside After Effects. So I've suppressed my breath noises and I've increased and leveled out the loudness of me talking. Now the default is to use these linear line segments inside the Dynamics Processing. Honestly, this is akin to using linear keyframes in After Effects, and this is referred to as a hard knee type transfer function. You make sudden changes. A more refined approach is to use spline curves. These are akin to auto Bezier curves inside After Effects. Now I've got a much smoother transfer function, and let's preview that and tweak this up a little bit. In this lesson, I want to share with you a number of tips and tricks you can use to help craft and refine your animations inside After Effects. In this lesson, I want to share with you a number of tips and tricks you can use to help craft and refine your animations inside After Effects. That's a nice improvement. However, I've got a little bit of problem when my voice tails off in between words. I'm so focused on burying those breath noises that I'm also burying some of the quieter syllables and sections of words. What I'd prefer to happen here is to keep the words intact and only drop in between the words. Well, to do that, I need to go into the Settings tab and tell the Gain processor, Gain is how much amplitude or volume change, to be a little slower to let go, to compress or make my voice louder and to keep that loudness while my voice decays at the ends of words or phrases. So by increasing the release time, in this lesson, I want to share with you a number of tips and tricks you can use to help craft and refine your animations inside After Effects. I get a much more natural sounding voice. And again, this is before. In this lesson, I want to share with you a number of tips and tricks you can use to help craft and refine your animations inside After Effects and after. In this lesson, I want to share with you a number of tips and tricks you can use to help craft and refine your animations inside After Effects. And I might want to do a little bit gain reduction just to go ahead and stop that little clipping I'm seeing down here in these bars. If I like what I have, I can save it as my own preset. Chris Vox Repair. And if I really like it, I can make it a favorite so it appears in this menu item. So favorites, Chris Vox Repair. And I'm going to number it one because I might develop some of these later on. Click OK and click Apply. Now, the problem with applying it is that it only applied it to my selected area. So I was a little too fast there. You have to be careful about that. I'm going to undo, either deselect or select all, and use that favorite I just saved, Chris Fox Repair 1, now applied to the entire track. Knock down the breath noises in between the phrases, increased and leveled out the volumes of me actually talking. Now that I'm happy with this, I need to save it. Just hitting Command or Control S, though, will not overwrite the original file because it was a QuickTime movie that included video as well. So instead, when I do Command or Control S, I'm asked to resave this document. So I'm going to say this, new voice, After Effects can read WAV or AIFF files. So either format's fine with me. Pick a place to save it, such as a place where I've been saving all of these other projects. Click Save, double check my values. 
Yep, I'm happy with that. And click OK. I've now saved my repaired track out of Audition, but if I switch back to After Effects at this point, it will not automatically load that repaired track. The reason is, is that it's not embedded in this video anymore. It's a completely new track. So I'm going to do Command or Control I, Import, pick my new voice, and Import. Now, if you had used the video full length without editing and started it at time zero in your composition, all you need to do is drag your new audio track into your comp and turn off the audio switch for your previous video. However, I want to show you the foolproof way that takes into account maybe you've edited the video or maybe it's not starting at the very beginning of your composition. Go back to my composition, duplicate that original track, turn off the audio for one copy, turn off the video for the other one, leave it selected and say, replace it with this brand new voice track. The trick to do that quickly is to hold down Command and Option on Mac or Control and Alt on Windows, press forward slash, and it will replace the selected track in the comp with the selected footage item in the project panel. Now I have my new voiceover track with my old video. Do a quick RAM preview. And I'll press spacebar rather than make you watch this whole thing. Hi, I'm Chris Meyer of Chris Design and welcome to After Effects Apprentice Advanced Animation. In this lesson, I want to, and there's my improved track back into After Effects. There's a few more steps, some user assembly required, but that's how you use Audition to improve your tracks from inside After Effects.